Good evening and welcome to Spokane City Council meeting for August 19th. I'd like to start with the land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that we are on the unceded land of the Spokane people and that these lands were once the major trading center for the Spokanes as they shared this place and welcomed other tribes through their relations, history, trade, and ceremony. We also want to acknowledge that the land holds the spirit of the place through its knowledge, culture, and all the original people since time immemorial. As we take a moment to consider the impacts of colonization, may we also acknowledge the strength and resiliency of the Spokanes and their relatives. As we work together in making decisions that benefit all, may we do so as one heart, one mind, and one spirit. We are grateful to be on the shared lands of the Spokane people and ask for the support of their ancestors in all relations. We ask that you recognize these injustices that forever change the lives of the Spokane people and all their relatives. We agree to work together to stop all acts of continued injustices toward Native Americans and all our relatives. It is time for reconciliation. We must act upon the truths and take actions that will create restored justice for all people. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Fister, if you call the roll. Council President Wilkerson. Present. Council Member Sapone. Here. Council Member Cathcart. Present. Council Member Dillon. Here. Council Member Klitsky. Present. Council Member Navarrete. Here. Let the record reflect that Council Member Bingle is absent. Thank you. Um, we did suspend the rules earlier today for resolution 2024-082. Ms. Fister. Did you want to go forward with the consent agenda first? Oh, or? Please, there's a motion for the okay. consent agenda. Okay. Justin Holler. Thank you. Oh, he's right there. Is he online? Oh, oh, no, that's not him. Never mind. Is he online? Sure. I thought he was talking to Will. No, it's the other I don't see him. No. no. Okay. Justin, we do not see him online or in the building. So I'll get a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any no's? Ayes have it. Ms. Fister. Resolution 2024-82, approving the appointment of Kevin Hall as the police chief for the Spokane Police Department. I don't think Maggie was going to brief us on that, but I don't think so. Our police chief will be able to join us sooner than what we had anticipated, so we moved up his appointment process. Uh, any comment from council? Councilmember Katkar. Yeah, just real quick, I definitely want to commend Maggie Yates on a great process. I think it worked really well. Um, I think we got a great, great hire. I mean, obviously, it always remains to be seen, but, but I really think that we got the, the right choice. Um, and so really look forward to seeing uh, Chief Hall uh, uh, here in town and in place and doing some good work. Absolutely. I think his start date is the 26th. Councilmember Dillon. Yeah. Oh, we do have testimony. We do. Why don't you hold that yeah. for a second? And I'll come back. Uh, NOR Peace on the consent agenda. Please come down. And then Justice for All. Good evening. My name is Anwar Peace, a 24-year police accountability expert. I wish to welcome Kevin Hall as Spokane's newest police chief, and I look forward to the positive changes he will do to improve the public safety for all in our community. Plus, I would also like to thank the city administration for their community outreach during the selection process of the police chief, which that outreach highlighted what our community wants for the future of public safety and also allowed the public to vent about the ongoing failures of the tenure of the last police chief.
As for Chief Hall, he really impressed me during his interviews because of the fact that he has been credited for his innovative approaches to community-based violent crime reduction, alternative staff and response models, as well as ethical budgeting. Plus, in June, he was named to the Evidence-Based Policing Hall of Fame, which I'm eager to learn more about. And I'm looking forward to see how he plans on bringing that to Spokane. Chief Hall will have his work cut out for him in taking over the Spokane Police Department, which SPD is the second deadliest police force in the nation, with over 15 officers that have multiple killings under their belt. On top of that, SPD has recently had three officers that have been convicted or charged with raping fellow officers or DV victims, which this department has done nothing to address the issue, nor have they done any department-wide sexual harassment trainings. Just a week ago, the ACLU filed a lawsuit against the city over the treatment of our homeless neighbors by being criminalized by this police department, which officers show no empathy towards our homeless neighbors while doing street sweeps. So it is my hope that with Chief Hall coming to Spokane, he will become that change agent that has been desperately needed for this department in order to drag this department into to, to the 21st century policing. I'm very eager and looking forward to seeing Chief, Hall, Chief Hall's first 100-day action plan, and I'm hopeful that part of that action plan will be for him to reach out to those 25 organizations that had called for the last chief's resignation while also doing true building of relationship with those organizations. Thank you, Anwar. Thank you. Next is Justice for All. He's online. Hello, Justice for All. Yes, uh, go ahead. City resident. Go Justice ahead, Justice. Justice Spokane City resident. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank Hello. you. Okay. Um, I wanted to uh, speak on um, Chief Meidel. Sorry, sorry. Kevin Hall's uh, appointment, and I just hope that Kevin Hall does something different uh, than the last interim chief and the uh, chief model as well, because we can't have uh, a chief that is only interested in the in the few and not the, the everybody in Spokane. Um, it was very problematic. It did not uh, address a lot of the harms in the city. Um, so I hope we see something different with the new police chief. Thank you so much. Thank you, Justice. Councilmember Dillon. Yeah, just I want to thank everyone who took part in, you know, a pretty engaging process. Uh, this was very community driven and I think sent a really good template about how we look at uh, a lot of our, um, you know, kind of high level uh, positions uh, in Spokane. And, you know, we had a very uh, diverse uh, group of stakeholders uh, that were part of the selection process. We had a lot of great candidates. It was an honor to serve with the council member. Uh, Cathcart and a lot of our um, different organizational uh, representations that covered, I think, a lot of different facets of the city. And, you know, we know all too well that the challenges to public safety in the city are immense. Um, but, and we don't want to put too much pressure on Chief Hall, but uh, we know that uh, change can take time and uh, look forward to him getting out in the community and um, us, I think, kind of changing the way that we really do work with community around public safety and uh, know that this is very much a, a two-way street and we really welcome feedback as we strive to create a safer Spokane. Any other commentary? Prepare to vote. Okay, we're going to clear the board and redo it again. Prepare to vote. Thank you. Ordinance C-36544 is deferred to committee. Ordinance C-36557 creating the Climate Resilience and Sustainability Board repealing Chapter 4.36 of Title IV of the Spokane Municipal Code creating a new Chapter 4.41 of Title IV of the Spokane Municipal Code. 
We have several public comments. First is Linda Carroll, and then Larry Luton, and then Brian Hitting. Welcome. Good evening to council members and to attendees. Uh, my name is Linda Carroll. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was part of the Sustainability Action Subcommittee. So as you can well imagine, <laughs> I'm very much in favor of this, uh, of creating this committee. Uh, let me give you a little bit of background. Um, my father was a scientist. He was a chemist. He taught chemistry at Rogers High School for many years. Uh, and the chemists have been known since the 1950s what we were doing to the earth and to ourselves. And finally, the public awareness and public officials have caught up with what the scientists have known since my parents bought me my confirmation dress in this building when it was a Montgomery Ward department store. <laughs> we're burning down our outlying communities. We're cooking our fish in the river. We're killing 50,000 people a year in Europe alone through heat-related illnesses and disorders. It's time for us to really, we, we developed a sustainability action plan. It's time for us to move on this. It's time for us to stop me here now, my pocketbook right here, right now, and take responsibility for the long term. We've got the plan, we need the committee, and we need the recommendations that they will make. Thank you. Thank you very much. Larry? Larry Luton? Well, Brian, we'll let you go next. Maybe Larry will walk in. Good evening, City Council President, Council Members. Uh, my name is Brian Henning. I'm here speaking as a resident of the Emerson Garfield neighborhood here in Spokane and to speak in favor of this Climate Resilience and Sustainability Board Ordinance. This night has been many years in the making. In 2018, Spokane City Council adopted an ordinance that, among other things, required the creation of a citywide sustainability action committee. Unfortunately, that's not what happened. With blatant and willful contempt for our city's laws, both Mayor Condon and then Mayor Woodward refused to nominate a single person to this group. Six years later, this committee still does not exist. Meanwhile, over these last six years, the climate crisis continues to spiral. Thus, I urge you to vote yes on this ordinance to create the Climate Resilience and Sustainability Board and to impanel it as quickly as possible. But this is not enough. It's not enough to create a board that will allow community members to volunteer their time and talent if the city does not also allocate dedicated personnel to staff it. That's why I ask you as you begin to work on the biennial budget to take up the recommendation from Mayor Brown's transition team to create an Office of Community Resilience staffed by a cabinet level Chief Resilience Officer. There needs to be someone who wakes up every day with the sole purpose of trying to make our community more resilient to the changing climate. Until we have that, this effort will not be fully successful. Thank you. Thank you. Next we'll have Warbear. And then David Camp. Hey, um, I think this is one of the most important things that we can do as a council and especially as a body as a whole. Um, climate change is the most fearsome predator and issue that we will be dealing with as a human race. And coming from an indigenous perspective, we need to be focused more on sustainability practices. If we don't do that, things are gonna get worse and worse and worse and more people are gonna suffer from heat stroke and heat related illnesses. I'm not sure why this board wasn't passed before, but let's get, let's get started somewhere. I would like to be involved with this somehow for sure. I think we need more input from the tribes as well. Their voices, their tribal liaisons, that would be a perfect place to start. Um, creating a relationship between the people and this council in that way, I think would be a good way to get started and get on board. Um, I would like to talk more to my elders about this as well, but this is a good step in the right direction. But as previously stated, there definitely needs to be funds allocated from the budget to support this effort. And every other issue is valid and matters, but climate change is the giant monster that we are going to be facing as a human race, especially in the coming generations, the ones that follow me. So I definitely think we need to get started on this. We need to put more energy and effort into it. There needs to be more funds allocated for it to support it, and I would like to get started and help as well with it. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Warbear. David Camp?
Hello, I'm David Camp. I served on the Buildings and Energy Work Group of the Sustainability Action Subcommittee for two years, led the group for a year, and I urge you to pass this. Uh, we have a lot to do. We are losing people. We lost 19 people to death in uh, 2021 during the heat dome. Uh, this is a serious issue that will not go away in our lifetimes. So I ask you to pass this. Uh, this sustainability board is essential. I ask you to please uh, turn this into a cabinet level position. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll go back to Larry Ludness. Larry online. Larry, if you're online, could you press star three to raise your hand? All right, council commentary. Council member Catcart. Yeah, I, um, I, I have some concerns regarding the ordinance. I think the, the specific uh, board members are too narrow and I really worry that we're, we're gonna kind of bias the, the conversation and perspectives. Um, and so I offered uh, an alternative this afternoon that included a whole host of, of spe specific experts uh, from different fields that could provide some really good input, including a tribal liaison that is specifically absent from the plan we're voting on today. Um, and in addition, trying to require more financial analysis and uh, environmental analysis to see what is the actual impact of the policy. What's the positive uh, for the environment? What's the impact to the economy? What's the impact to the city's budget? Uh, really, those are things we have to have a fundamental understanding of especially if we are actually serious about affecting and addressing climate change. Because then we can start to filter, sort, and say what's the most impactful and the lowest cost, and you just start going down the list. Um, but to w without that, it's impossible to make a thoughtful decision. It's impossible to know what the impacts on the community will be. It's impossible to know what the cost to us will be. Sometimes we don't even, you know, the costs change because we haven't thought, thought it through enough. So I just wanna make sure that we are doing the absolute um, due diligence that we need to do to make sure the policies have the effect that we think or we're told they will, and that the cost is something that is bearable by the community uh, members that we represent. So, um, so no, I'm not gonna vote for, for the version tonight. I, I absolutely would have voted for the version um, that I offered this afternoon or some compromised version of that. Uh, that adds specificity, that adds more perspectives, that adds a wide array of thoughts um, to how we address these issues and requiring that financial and environmental uh, piece. And so uh, without those, it, it's, it's impossible for me to support this. Yeah, Council, Council Member Klitsky. I'll be supporting this tonight. I'm excited to see this come forward. I was on the first sustainability action plan effort. Um, back then, my committee was called the Built and Unvilt Environment, which I think is the same committee that Mr. Camp led, and I was a co-chair. And um, progress on climate change um, has been slow and frustrating, and I hear you about that. Um, but the, the reason I, I support this in the current makeup that it has is because the scope of this committee is a little bit broader than just creating a sustainability action plan. We're hoping to bring our comprehensive plan, especially the climate mitigation things, before this committee. So the scope is a little bit different. They're not just going to be dreaming up new ideas. They're going to be reacting to policies that already have their um, capital facilities planning and um, other kinds of environmental analysis that will already come with it. So this group, I think, would, is not specific enough to do that with. I do support the idea of adding a tribal liaison, and I think I'd be happy to work with Council Member Cathcart on that. And also, um, I think if we're going to require f like fiscal analysis and kind of after action efficacy, analysis, we should require it across the board on everything we do and be happy to work on something like that. Councilmember Dillon. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, excited to vote for this tonight. I know it's been a long time coming. I remember uh, back in, I think it was like 2009 maybe, when uh, there was the kind of proposal for the first uh, sustainability, sustainability action report that the task force had put together. and. The council at the time just kind of voted to accept it, like acknowledge that it existed without kind of a lot of uh, follow-up and implementation. And so, so here we are, and 
you know, we know that um, last July, Spokane experienced uh, its hottest month uh, ever um, with uh, more than 20 days in a row um, with higher than 90 degrees and seven days that were more than uh, 100 degrees. And as was uh, mentioned by a previous speaker, um, the preventable deaths that happened uh, in 2021 um, that killed uh, 19 people and temperatures were up around 109, 110. And so uh, I think there's um, a lot more work to be done on this. I think when we think about climate resiliency, uh, it really does kind of center around our most vulnerable, um, you know, our uh, region being more and more susceptible to wildfires and, and how we really prepare and um, excited about a lot of the moving parts that we currently have with uh, the Gonzaga Climate Institute getting the $20 million grant um, from the EPA uh, to help exactly with that climate resiliency and planning and so I think it's really important that we put this uh, front and center and excited for this step as a city. Well, I'll be supporting as well tonight, and the structure of the committee absolutely uh, is flexible for the tribes to be part of that, and the first start is getting this committee up and running. So with that, prepare to vote. I do. Larry, do you want to come up? I'll allow you this space. We thought you were online. I wasn't online. I planned to be here, but I didn't think you'd move this fast. So I gave myself a little time. Uh, so I'm sorry. Nope. Uh, but my name is Larry Luton, and I first moved to Spokane in 1984. I've been involved in sustainability advocacy and planning in Spokane since Mayor Werner appointed me to her sustainability task force. We produced Spokane's first sustainability action plan in 2009. It took eight years for the city council to adopt that plan. I've also been involved in the sustainability action subcommittee since its inception. That group wrote the second sustainability action plan in 2021. I urge you to vote for Ordinance 36559, creating the Climate Resilience and Sustainability Board. This ordinance would move sustainability planning and programming in Spokane into a much overdue next generation. We should have been close to this step in 2018 when the City Council created the Sustainability Action Committee. Unfortunately, Two mayors refused to implement that ordinance. We now have a mayor who is ready and eager to nominate members for this board. It is needed to meet state requirements for our next comprehensive plan, due in 20, June 2026. It is also needed to move forward in our independently designed path for sustainability, writing our next sustainability plan and helping to develop ordinances and programs that will be needed to implement it. Please vote yes on creating the Climate Resilience and Sustainability Board. We need to get to work. Climate change is moving faster than we are. Thank you. Council President, can I just make one final comment? Yes. Uh, just, just remiss to not point out, um, in the actual Sustainability Action Committee, which has been referenced and not implemented, um, obviously, which I understand the frustration uh, there, uh, there is a code that specifically says, it's SMC 0436040, adopted August 20, 2018, requires fiscal impact analysis, specifically looking at fiscal impacts, economic impacts, and impacts from negative externalities to be conducted by the Sustainability Action Committee. That has never been done. I tried to do it with the Sustainability Action Plan. We we couldn't get the amendment through. So none of that work has been done yet. Um, and I would say that this board is kind of the, the supposed to replace that committee in a lot of ways. And so I think if we expected it of that committee, we should expect it of this board to do thorough financial analysis. 
Thank you, Councilman Catcart. Prepare to vote. Thank you. Ordinance C-36-558, repealing an act of funds, amending section 7.08, 119, and 159, repealing section 7.08, 105, 111, 118, 120, 126, 128, 142, 144, 200, 308, 309, and 0 .410 of the Spokane Municipal Code, repeals municipal code sections related to inactive special revenue, debt service, capital projects, and enterprise funds. Testimony? No public testimony. Council commentary? This is definitely a housekeeping cleanup of inactive funds as we've gone through to just get them off of the books. So prepare to vote. Ordinance C-36559 relating to the membership of the Spokane Employees Retirement System Board amending Spokane Municipal Code Section 4.14.040. Public comment? No public comment. Any council commentary? Requested by them. Prepare to vote. Thank you. That concludes our legislative part of our meeting. We will now go into open forum. You have two minutes. Please direct all your comments to the chair and be respectful. First up is James Earl. And then Robert Thompson after him. Evening. Uh, first, I want to say I uh, greatly appreciate uh, City Council going out to Cali Park to see firsthand what was going on out there. Um, that really does play a big impact as far as what the public thinks and everything, where there is just a bunch of people hanging out there in the shade, minding their own business. And that's what we uh, Council saw. So I greatly appreciate going out to get a firsthand uh, thing on that. Uh, now I'm going to go kind of opposite on that and speak on behalf of uh, a friend of mine, Joseph Sampson, who was harassed by SPD on the sidewalk while he was eating his drugs, uh, which was his breakfast, um, while the officer was uh, going to cite him for obstructing when during the video there was nobody coming up, there's nobody passing through that area at all. Uh, during this time, what I do see is fraud, waste, and abuse, abuse of power, and a waste of time. Also, um, when the medical glove came out, was this like, uh, was he trying to make him consent for a, uh, or, never mind. Um, so, yeah, they made it kind of sound very extreme with the glove coming out. I'll leave it at that. Um, so... Now this leads me to wonder what kind of uh, power trip was this cop on at this time, what kind of training happened and everything else, because clearly what we saw was an abuse of power, and was this part of the Nadine Woodward, uh, which I'm going to call it, Ron Burgundy administration, where, you know, we got this going around. If so, then please promote this cop to sidewalk patrol where they just roam the streets and leave it at that. Have a Thank good night. You. Stay classy, Spokane. Thank you, Earl. Robert Thompson and then Will Hewlings. Um, my name is Robert Thompson. I am the chair of the West Hills Neighborhood Council. Uh, I'm just here today to offer an invitation. Um, it's a beautiful time of year to visit West Hills Neighborhood, to visit the Arboretum, to see some of the homes with the flowers in bloom. Um, and I encourage you to come and visit us. I'm not sure how many of you get over to that side of, this, uh, of the city. And 
I encourage you to visit us with a little bit of a critical eye to think about what it might look like to live there, to be visiting for the first time. I like to say that we are the back door to the city. Uh, we may be people's first impression as they're coming in off of the airport or as they are coming in off of Highway 2. And we are facing some very serious beautification issues. So as you know, the bridge is in major disrepair. Um, I know that you're working on trying to get that fixed. But we also have some huge litter and camping concerns. And unfortunately, I'm not sure that we are seeing results through the systems that the city has set up. We are seeing camps move from one side of the road to the other. We're seeing litter move from one side to the other. We had two fires in the neighborhood just today. So I would encourage you to come visit us, come see our area, to see our corridor, um, and to do so with an eye towards what it might be like to live there, to be visiting for the first time, and then to come and chat with us and talk a little bit more about what it is that we can do together to make sure that we make that corridor a beautiful area and to make our neighborhood and our city a beautiful place to continue to work, play, and live. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Will Hewling? And then Cherry Hill. Good evening. Uh, my name is Will Hewlings, and I live downtown. Um, I, I just want to talk about as someone that lives downtown. So I've li been living downtown since uh, 2019. And since then, I have witnessed the dramatic and troubling transformation in our city, especially following the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, downtown Spokane has changed in ways that are both shocking and disheartening. Before the pandemic, you might occasionally come across people using drugs, but it was often out of view. Now it's impossible to walk downtown, down the sidewalk, uh, without encountering predominantly, mainly homeless individuals openly smoking drugs. And that's what I that's what I encounter all the time in my neighborhood, and it's disgusting. I find it just really disgusting, especially when I have to call crime check sometimes two, three times. And I know I've talked about this before, but I don't know this new police chief, and I hope he's watching. I hope he actually does what he's paid to do because he is getting paid over $300,000 a year. He's getting paid more than our mayor. So if we don't see results, I'm going to be calling him out because I support the blue, but just kind of shocking that I still see all this open drug use. The Lisa Brown, the mayor, she has this big plan. Well, what's her, what's her plan? I'm, I'm sick and tired of seeing all this drug use and then the homeless problem. It's filthy, disgusting. You guys, yeah. Thank you, Thank you Will. Terry Hill and then War Bear. Terry Hill, Spokane. Um, recent numbers supp uh, supplied uh, by the city of Spokane show 2,400 uh, calls uh, responded to by SPD for illegal encampments. Does anybody know how much this is costing Spokane? Law enforcement officers don't work for nothing, and they shouldn't be expected to. Responding to a, 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 an encampment, uh, any time I drive by one, I see a minimum of three. I see sometimes I see more SPD vehicles than I see people at the encampment. Throw in a fire truck and maybe an ambulance, and you're racking up some big bucks. Is this feasible? Is this sustainable? I thank all of you for your service to Spokane, and I yield the podium. Thank you, Terry. War Bear? And after War Bear, Justin Holler. Hey. Um, the biggest problems that I personally have seen and experienced in Native country stems all from colonization, breaking of treaties, not honoring treaty rights, 
abandonment, neglect, poverty, alcoholism, substance abuse and use, sexual slavery, human trafficking, child trafficking. Um, I mean, every single part of our cultures has been attacked, not only from our own government, but from colonization. And people still invalidate and deny our experience, not just as indigenous peoples, but as human beings. And that is something that I not only myself have had to carry as an indigenous man, but I've seen my peoples and my cultures have to carry. So when we come to you with solutions or we come to you with info or knowledge or we come to you with our problems, I know I've been angry in the past and I've raised my voice, but the thing is is that I just want something to be done and I want us to be able to work together on it. We need to find solutions for these problems. Because unfortunately, I had an elder tell me, she said, there's not many Native men that are like you. There's not many Native men that are here advocating for the people and supporting the people. Frankly, in many of the spaces and the rooms that I'm in, I'm the only Native man. I'm the only Indigenous person in that room or speaking to try and help the people. And that is a weight that I carry, but I do it because the people need me and they, we need to be heard. So when I come here, I'm not trying to add onto your burden or disrespect you or be intolerable. I'm just trying to be vulnerable, which is hard as a man. I'm trying to be vulnerable and show you and tell you, Thank you what we're Bear. going through as a people. So we need, we need to work on some things together, please. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Justin Holler, and after Justin Holler, Earl Moore. I am Justin Haller, uh, District 1. Um, I think the change to the parking is deplorable. It's great for developers and people who build things, but it's not great for people who actually own houses and w want to park on the street. Um, so I still don't want fluoride. I think we should cut the bu budget to the homeless completely out and maybe cut the bu budget to parks in half. It's a complete waste of money. I don't know why we're having uh, lush green grass just for homeless people to hang out on and, and smoke their drugs, where uh, all the visitors in Spokane Riverfront Park get to enjoy that, that smell. Um, how, how many uh, private agendas are driven by ideology that don't work? I've mentioned several times uh, Chicago, New York, L.A., San Francisco, how many, how many examples do we need to see of burning cities uh, created by a certain agenda that leans a certain direction and you guys are like, yeah, this will work this time. Just completely deplorable. Maybe leave your ideology at the, at the door and do something good for the people instead. Um, show, and on, on that note, show, show me where gun control and, and coddling addicts has ever worked. I, I, don't, I don't see where it's ever worked. It, it just hasn't. And I'll end on this note from, uh, this is from White Lines uh, by Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Uh, let's see, where is it, where is it? Uh, let's see. A million, a million magic crystals painted pure and white, a multi-million dollars almost overnight. Twice as sweet as sugar, twice as uh, bitter as salt. And if you get hooked, baby, it's nobody else's fault. Thank you, so, Justin. On that note, who's selling the drugs? Thank There's you. There's someone selling the drugs, and you guys are looking the other way because no one's getting arrested. Thank you, Justin. Earl Moore, and then. Yellow, the Earl Moore, then Justice for All. Thank you, Council President and Council Members. Abraham Lincoln said, A house divided by itself will not stand. In the Bible, in Matthew 12, 25, it says, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and no city or house divided against it will stand. The dictionary describes the word unity as being joined. The phrase unity is strength is a famous saying that means people are more powerful when they work together rather than when they work alone. Martin Luther King Jr. said, Unity is strength. Division is weakness. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice anywhere. 
The phrase unity is not uniformity means that unity is the effort to respect, tolerate differences well. Uniformly means the state of having the same views, same beliefs, same standards. Unity requires accepting differences rather than trying to eliminate them. Unity grows when we serve together in peace, teach each other, and encourage one another. In 1953, in the inaugurational address, Eisenhower also had a Bible opened to Second Chronicles 714. I encourage you all to look that verse up. Jimmy Carter had a Bible open to Micah 6.8. I encourage you to look those verses up. I think we show respect for those in power, but we do not follow blindly. One of our greatest freedoms is how we react to things. And I would ask you to remember that you are elected by the citizens of Spokane. You work for us, not for the pleasure of the administration. There are two kinds of people in the world today, those who are part of the solution and those who are part of the problem. I would like to ask you, which are you? And now I would like to take my privilege to pray over this city council right now. Lord, thank you for our mayor. Lord, I thank you for our city. I thank you for city council and leaders at every level in our city. I pray, Lord, that you would give them grace to bring truth, justice, and stability to our region. Give thank them you, power Lord. to know what to do, what is right, and what is fair. May our community henceforth be known for its justice. Thank, thank you, you very much. Justice for all, and then Sunshine Wigan. Justice, if you're online, could you hit star three to raise your hand? Sunshine, come on down. Mm -hmm. Sunshine Wigan from Spokane. Um, so I just recently moved my kid out of his apartment at Catholic Charities, and his apartment was left unlocked while he was in jail, and his mother's stuff is gone, and so we're dealing with that. But um, what was disturbing was having social workers stand around and talk about him like he could not hear him, uh, or hear them, sorry, and... Um, it triggered his mental illness worse than it would have been if it would have been a smoother move, but for the most part. Um, so we're a little bit frustrated with that. But uh, I want to say that the, um, I, I spoke to a couple of the cops down there in, um, by the coffee shot, Evergreen Shots, and I wanted to say thank you for them doing their part and helping us down there because we were having just a couple of different problems down there. And um, I just wanted to publicly say that. Thank you, you guys. Thank you, Sunshine. Dave Bilslin. And after Dave, Mary Lee Gaston. I like Dave Bilslin, Logan. I'd like to see a loading zone in front of City Hall. Because when we do Cool Spokane, we're carrying 10 cases at a time to supply the thing. Well, when we have to park and block traffic, it's a danger. <clears throat> so we need a loading zone in there. And every Monday night, Mac is down here, and we could use that loading zone to unload stuff. It's really inconvenient to come down and try and find a parking place to unload a bunch of stuff. And sometimes I can't even find a parking space. Right now I'm parked across the street. Fortunately, I didn't have a lot of heavy stuff this time. But we really need to have that capability there. How many times has one of the employees come in and had something to deliver? How many times has FedEx come in, tried to deliver, can't find parking? UPS, likewise. How about if anybody orders something to eat? They need a loading zone to sit at so they can go deliver things. So we really need a loading zone out there that the public has access to because, doggone it, I'm tired of carrying this stuff so far. Please help us. 
It's not just me. It's everybody that comes down here and has a bunch of stuff they want to unload. Maybe they want to contribute to us. And also think about this uh, law that Joe Sampson ran into. That thing's been around for 20 years. It was passed the same day as the transient shelter ordinance. And it's ridiculous that they can bust people for standing on a sidewalk and there's nobody to obstruct and they're still writing them up. That's ridiculous. It's bloody damn ridiculous to go writing people up because they're sitting, trying to eat and the cop is accusing them of doing drugs. Thank you, What Dave. a bunch of BS. Thank you. Mary Lee, and then after that, Jen Hoover. Oh, I'm Mary Lee Gaston. I've been a, I'm a lifer in Spokane. Been here all my life. Been very involved in climate change and very involved in uh, the homeless projects. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to bring up that I'm not sure anyone has brought up yet is: uh, Have you considered the possibility of getting back to a? Uh, I don't mean a hard line like 15 years ago there was a hard line commitment of someone who looked mentally ill they had to go out to the state hospital for 90 days and get evaluations and uh, then that was violating civil rights so that's not there anymore but what about eastern state hospital which has 90 people in the last few days i checked 90 people who are there because of mental illness and their treatment and there's about two or three hundred beds empty and I wonder what would be the possibility of using the state hospital with some adaptations on separate floors from the people who are there now as patients, that the people who are really hardcore mentally ill and drug addicted on the streets of Spokane, some of them dying, I see them having convulsions from fentanyl, what would be wrong with a, a little bit of a hard line again of saying, you must, you must spend 90 days in the state hospital and we're going to help you. And... Uh, I think that, I don't know what are they doing with all the empty beds. The place hasn't been filled for a long, long time. So please consider Eastern State Hospital as a possibility. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jen? Such an honor to be here and a privilege. Thank you so much. I wanted to make mention of the homeless situation with an encouragement of the preparation of establishments with on-site volunteer rehabilitation and psychiatric care, with actively interacting with local businesses for first step job training programs such as uh, folding pizza boxes. Very simple first step job training. All this can be done, I believe, with secure monitoring in establishments where there is volunteer help that is, like I said, securely monitored, even metal detectors at the door. What I wanted to say, my main point is, we can do this on a budget with volunteer help. And I believe with interacting with local businesses and those who could pitch in and offer help, we can keep it on a budget. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jen. That concludes our open forum for this evening. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second to adjourn the legislative session. For August 16th, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any no's? This meeting is adjourned. Please join us next Monday night on August 26th.